Hi, I'm Jennifer Kerr, President and CEO of the Broomfield Chamber of Commerce, and this is Broomfield Business Buzz. Did you know that Colorado ranks as one of the top five states of breweries per capita? We're at one of those breweries today, right here in Broomfield, Colorado. Let's see what's brewing at Big Choice Brewing. Hi, Nathaniel. Hey, Jennifer. Thanks for having us here at the brewery today. You're welcome. You're one of the newer businesses in Broomfield, so welcome. Thank you. Um, how did you get started in the brewing business? Um, well, what we wanted to do was create an atmosphere where people from the local community could come and get a good, handcrafted, quality-made beer that was made by people that are from the neighborhood. Where did the name Big Choice come from? We believe that everybody deserves a choice when it comes to beer, something locally made, versus something that might be made from somewhere else in the nation. We started in my garage. I got most of my brewing education from the local library. The first beer that I made was a, a kit from a homebrew shop right up the street, um, and it was an IPA, and it was really good. My wife and I thought it was just awesome, so we figured that that was something we could try again and see if we couldn't do even better. Basically, our motto is we, we brew the beers that we like to drink. For the most part, we like a, a lot of hoppier beers, but we also like to play in some of the more malty beers, some of the seasonals. We'd also like to start getting into some of the sour beers and barrel-aged type of beers. Of all the breweries in Colorado, what sets Big Choice Brewing apart from all the rest? I think there's a couple of things that set us apart from everybody else. The one most importantly is we are local in Broomfield. Plus, we also put a lot of love and care in our beer from a local standpoint. So how do you know a beer is just right when it comes to taste? Um, we want to make sure that there's no off flavors from any of the processes that we do. But basically when it gets to the point when we're in the tasting process where we really enjoy it, that's when we want to start serving it. So what do you like about doing business in Broomfield? Um, it's a lot of, lot of good community. It's what I remember as being in this area when I was growing up. They're good hearted. They love to come out, they love to talk about things going on in their community. A great place where people can kind of come together and just be who they are. So how do you let people know what festivals you will be participating in? We try and hit all the big social media type stuff like Facebook, Twitter. Um, we're also putting together an e-newsletter that people can sign up for. Um, we have a great review site on Yelp uh, where you can check out a video of some of the things that we're doing around here and see some of the local reviews that people have made. So Nathaniel, why don't you show me the process of making beer from start to finish? Okay. So basically we start over here. This is where all of our grain is stored until we're ready to use it. We do get our grain pre-milled. We take this pre-milled grain in the recipe that we, we have for our different beers and we move it over here into the mash tun. The mash tun is a, a place where it's kind of like making a cup of tea. So what we're doing is we're steeping the grain inside the mash tun with some hot water. And we do that for about an hour. And once that process is done, what we're trying to do with that process is extract the sweet sugar out of the grain. And that's gonna be called wort once we've moved it into the boil kettle. Okay, so once our 90 minute boil is complete and our whirlpool has been done and we've gotten all those solids into the center of the kettle here, we pull the wort out of the kettle. We run it through the heat exchanger here, which basically has hot wort on one side and cool city water on the other side. And the heat transfer takes place so that we come down from about 200 degrees out of the kettle to about 65 to 70 degrees into the fermenter. So once the wort has been cooled and we move it over here into the fermenter, we're gonna add our yeast and that's where all the magic happens. A lot of people think that we, we do a lot of work, but honestly, the yeast do most of the work in the process. We add the yeast to here, and it takes anywhere from three to five days to ferment down. And during that process, we're changing the wort from wort to beer. Because when the yeast ferments this wort, it changes the sugars that are in the wort over to carbon dioxide and alcohol. And we want to chill it down to about 35 degrees. 
What that helps do is that helps precipitate the yeast and any other solids that are in the beer down to the bottom end of the cone. That way, at the time when we transfer this from here into the walk-in, which is where the bright tanks are, we get clear beer out of there. And what this does is this allows the, the beer to what's called drop bright. And what we want to do is we want to finally get all the loose uh, proteins and yeast particles that are in the beer that normally causes cloudy beer to drop to the very bottom. And once that's done, we purge that off at the very bottom of the tank, and then we start our carbonation, which is basically forced carbonation using CO2 through a diffusion stone, very similar to an aquarium and the stone that allows the oxygen to go in there for fish. So after about two to three days of being on the stone at a certain pressure and temperature, we basically have carbonated beer ready to go. At that point, we taste the beer and determine whether it needs a couple more days before we should put it on tap or if it's ready to go to the customer. Nathaniel, thanks for the tour of the brewery. So now are we in the tasting room? We are in the tasting room. And the, your bar here is beautiful. What can you tell me about this? Well, what's interesting about this bar top is that it's actually a recommissioned bowling alley lanes that rumor has it came from Celebrity Sports Center, which anybody who's local from around here will remember that vividly. So Nathaniel, I see you have your menu here of all the different beers that you currently have on tap. Can you tell me about the different types that you have? Okay. So what we have here is we have four, possibly five of the year-round beers that we carry. Those are our 10,000 Summer Saison, the number 42 Poblano Stout, the Type 3 IPA, and the Disconnected Red. And we're also possibly considering keeping our Hemlock Double IPA on as a year-round beer as well. Our Disconnected Red is actually getting put on tap at Old Chicago's in Thornton um, today. So it's a very exciting time for us. Just about six months after we open, we've got our beer on tap at one of the local restaurants. That's fantastic, congratulations. Thank you very much. So I notice you have columns, ABV and IBU. What does that stand for? Well, the ABV stands for alcohol by volume, and that tells you how much alcohol each beer has. Normally our beers range just a little bit above the standard 5%, like our double IPA, and we're also working on a Belgian quad which are anywhere from 95 to 10.5% alcohol. And then IBU? IBU is also, or is known as the International Bittering Unit. So that basically tells you how much uh, hop concentration is in the beer. We use the hops to bitter the beer, and the lower the number, the lower the bitterness, the higher the number, the higher bitterness. And it's our job to make those beers still taste fantastic, depending on how, how high the hop level is. Just about every day we do offer free popcorn in the tasting room. We also have chips for sale that people can come in and buy. We also offer root beer for some of the younger patrons that come in. We're family friendly so we encourage everybody to bring the dog and the kids and everything like that. Um, and then we also offer Friday and possibly Saturdays sometimes food trucks that come out and they park outside the building and people can go outside and get themselves some fantastic local food made by some great people. Do you have additional seating? We do. We have additional seating upstairs, so our tasting room is two level. We also, in case it gets fairly crowded, we also allow people to go out into the brew house and sit at some picnic tables out there. And depending on how warm it is, we also put an awning outside to let people sit a little bit outside. And that's usually on busier days. So Jennifer, you've been in before. What, uh, what's your favorite beer? I have to say I really like the Poblano Stout, and it's kind of sweet at the beginning, not real sweet, but has a nice smooth taste and then just a little bit of that pepper finish. Why don't you come around here and we'll, we'll show everybody how to do the perfect pour. Sounds great. Okay, Jennifer, so the keys to a perfect pour are gonna be, you wanna take the pint glass and hold it roughly at a 45 degree angle to the faucet. You never wanna touch the faucet to the beer, but you wanna commit all the way. So you wanna pull the handle out all the way so that you get the beer flowing real good, okay? So I'm gonna do my sample. 45 degree angle, commit all the way out, let the beer come up, and as it gets to the very top, you wanna to level out the glass so you get your full pour. And don't push back too far on this uh, faucet because it's also known as a creamer faucet, so if you push too, back too far, it'll kind of foam all, all over the place. So just gently push it all the way back. All right, wish me luck. So let's go for it. 45, commit. Already gonna have bad pour. That looks beautiful. Wrap it up. Not That'll quite, work. but close. Nice job. <laughs> Thanks. 
So Nathaniel, how does it feel to have taken something that started as a hobby, grew into a passion, and now you get to come here every day and kind of see the fruits of those labors and see uh, your own business? Well, I think the best part about it is uh, being my own boss definitely gives me the freedom to, to do what I want, and that ultimately results in the best product, you know, the best tasting beer. Getting up every day and putting in 18 hours a day, sometimes all week, it really doesn't feel that bad when you come in and, and get the work done and make the beer taste the way you want to. And I think the most rewarding part about it is um, asking people if there's anything better in the world. And usually the response is, there's nothing better in the world than, than drinking a big choice beer on a hot afternoon. And I tell them there is one more thing that's better than that. And they said, ah, don't get philosophical on me. And I said, nope, the better, best thing that I can hear is you guys saying that to me. Well, cheers to that. Cheers to that. Well, that's another edition of Broomfield Business Buzz. Tune in next month when we get the buzz on another Broomfield business. Finally, we wanted to let you know about a few Broomfield businesses that recently celebrated with a ribbon cutting ceremony. Fast signs can help you bring your business communications to life. From banners to building signs and vehicle graphics to trade show displays, their experts design and create graphic solutions to help your business, organization, or event meet your goals and raise your visibility. For more information, call 303-410-1122 or visit www.fastsigns.com. Beyond Body Work provides clinical massage therapy, particularly for people who are experiencing pain or limited mobility. Located in a beautiful clinic in the Troy Center, their services are affordable and very effective. They currently use massage and stretching, but will add yoga and acupuncture soon. For more information, call 720-484-4926 or visit www.beyondbodyworkco.com. Renaissance Boulder Flatiron Hotel is a four diamond hotel in Broomfield, Colorado. Conveniently located along the US 36 Denver Boulder Corridor, adjacent to the Flatiron Crossing Mall, the hotel offers 232 suites and over 6,000 square feet of meeting space. A true Renaissance experience, the hotel has recently completed a $4 million refresh on all rooms, meeting spaces, and Flats Restaurant and Bar. Discover the unique indigenous and independent spirit of the Renaissance. For more information, call 303-464-8400 or visit www.renaissanceflatiron.com. School of Rock believes that the best way to learn music is to play music. They take students from the lesson room to the stage, developing both their confidence and musicianship with programs designed for all skill levels. School of Rock teaches guitar, bass, vocals, keyboards, drums, and combines weekly private music lessons and group band rehearsals to prepare students to take the stage in front of live audiences in an authentic concert setting. For more information, call 303-513-7996 or visit broomfieldschoolofrock.com. McAdams Plumbing, based out of Broomfield, is family owned and operated and has been in business since February of 2009. They offer high quality service at fair prices, but their service doesn't end when the job ends. McAdams Plumbing strives to build long lasting relationships with customers based on trust and integrity. For more information, call 303 465 1900 or visit www.mcadamsplumbing.com. Remember, shopping locally helps build relationships with people in the community, which makes Broomfield a great place to eat, play, shop, and stay. Think community, think Broomfield.